It has been known for quite a while that the Isle Dev team is currently working on a brand new map for Evrima's branch, and the community's reception for such news has been mostly positive. However, there's a small minority that criticizes this decision due to them considering that the creation of a new map is not a priority and those resources should be invested elsewhere. Now, of course everyone is entitled to their own opinion and it should be respected by everyone. But I believe Gateway, that's the name of the map by the way, is not only a good investment but also a necessary one. And in this video, I'm going to argue in favor of the developer's choice and explain why this map is so important for the game. Before I talk about level design for the millionth time on this channel, I want to clarify something regarding the development process. A dev team is a group of people, each one dedicated to a specific task. Coders, artists, managers, and so on. Each dev usually is specialized in one field and their main job is to fulfill that role and nothing else. A good example that the community is familiar with is Brian being the main animator of the game. That's his job and that's all he does for the most part. Another example is Philippi being the main coder of the Isle. That's what he was hired for and that's what he does. Once the developer team surpasses a certain amount of people, each individual developer is tasked with a relatively specific job with no overlap. This categorization within dev teams start even sooner when it comes to polar opposite fields like coders versus artists, and that division extends even further depending on the game's needs. Environmental artists are responsible for the creation of all the assets present in the game's levels – rock, trees, grass, buildings, fruits, etc. Afterthought currently has two environmental artists. Visual Tech 48, that focuses on human structures and everything related to humans, and Jake, who's responsible for the level's assets. Basically everything organic is made by him. Fun fact, he is also the one who models the dinosaurs in the aisle. These developers don't contribute to the game's development in any other way other than the ones they are already performing. So essentially, the team's resources are not being wasted, but instead shifted into other priorities which in this case is going from working on Spiro to working on Gateway. Alright, now to the main point of the video. Dinosaur survival games are heavily reliant on level design due to it being the main playground where all the game's mechanics are utilized. Obviously every game needs a map in order to be played, but this subgenre is more dependent on the game's quality than the majority of games. I have talked about that same topic multiple times before, so if you want to watch those it's not mandatory, but it would add important context for today's topic, which is Gateway. Gateway is Evrima's next main map, which it seems it will replace Isla Spiro in the distant future. Truth is, even just with a few screenshots, we can already detect some positive changes that will, hopefully, reveal to be true. For one, all the environments that were showcased so far show a significant decrease of vegetation even in the areas that are supposed to be densely packed. That was one of the major issues Spyro has. That ridiculous overabundance of foliage is deeply detrimental on multiple levels, being one of them performance. Or lack thereof. Spyro is notoriously known for having absolutely abhorrent performance, so bad in fact that a sizable portion of the player base have so little frames per second that the game is basically unplayable regardless of the power of their machines, myself included. And a big contributor to that is the sheer amount of assets that the map has and the size of the map itself. I already explained this in the previous video, but to summarize it here, the engine simply can't render all the vegetation fast enough to give the players a good frame rate. And the fact that you have to load the entire map, which is full of trees by the way, while you only actively play with one fourth of it, only adds insult to injury. Another detrimental aspect of having such dense jungles everywhere is its damaging effects to the level's design and its accessibility. Playing at 10 FPS with tree branches constantly on your screen is a bad gameplay experience to say the least. The ridiculous high amount of foliage more often than not impedes the player's vision on a constant basis, which in turn can very rapidly become frustrating during nighttime or during combat. In addition, the complete lack of visual variation between biomes can easily confuse players, especially newcomers, 
Slightly different shades of green won't help the player guiding themselves to specific areas of interest and will most likely confuse them rather than aid them. Not to mention that dense forests everywhere also frequently prevent players from detecting landmarks or hotspots at a distance. This is heavily detrimental for the map's population flow over time, since half of the players on any given server is lost on a sea of trees with basically no guidance whatsoever. The pinnacle of this issue is having so much vegetation everywhere that it even hides canyons and ledges, and in consequence, numerous people lose their dinosaurs that cost them hours to grow purely because the map is flooded with assets. This is bad design. There is zero excuses for this. It doesn't matter if this was intentional or not. If a bad design was purposefully implemented, it's still a bad design. This shouldn't be in the game to begin with. Now, of course it's okay to have densely forested areas on a map. Those biomes can serve as natural barriers to discourage people to go in certain directions. That is fine. What is not fine is when there is an excess of those areas. And that's the main issue here. It's the overabundance of those biomes that hurt the game on multiple aspects. Fortunately, it seems that in Gateway those problems are being addressed at the very least. The few screenshots we have seen so far show that there are a lot more open areas and even inside forests there is an observable difference when it comes to the foliage density. Obviously it's not a major difference, but I believe it's good enough to not be a detriment. After all, if the devs want for us to be densely packed, that's their vision and we must respect that. It's only a problem if it's badly implemented. Another point they seem to be addressing is the landscape variety when it comes to their biomes. Spiro was notorious for being a bit too samey. There were differences depending on the environment, sure, but they were so minimal that only daily active players would easily notice them, and that would be due to familiarity rather than good design. Now, I'm not saying the models themselves are bad, don't get me wrong. If you know something about Jake, is that he does absolutely amazing models overall. What I'm referring to is the aesthetic variety of assets and not their visual quality. And going back a little bit, Gateway also seems to be taking a slightly different approach on human structures, at least initially from what we can tell. In Spiro, the majority of buildings, excluding one or two, were rather hidden and relatively small, not serving any real purpose when it comes to the level design. And that's fine. Their main purpose is targeted to mercenaries most likely anyway. However, in the new map, it seems that they will serve an extra function as landmarks. That was already a thing in Spiro, like the radio tower. I, I, I think it's a radio tower? But in Gateway, these massive buildings will be much easier to detect at a distance. This gives the developers the opportunity to use these human structures as waypoints to both attract players or guide them to other areas on top of serving their main purpose related to mercenaries. It is possible that Spiro's buildings were made with that in mind already, but the fact that the majority of human assets we saw in Gateway so far are, on average, larger than Evrima's previous map, indicates that there might have been a small shift regarding the structure's current function. In the end, I believe that starting from scratch is a better decision than trying to fix the horrible mess Spyro is. It will give the devs the chance to address the main issues their level has and provide players with a much better gameplay experience, at least when it comes to the map. All in all, it looks great, the landscape looks fantastic as usual, what I'm hoping the most out of this is that I can finally play the goddamn game without having FPS on the single digits. But honestly, nothing of that matters right now, because Dibbles are back, baby, let's fucking go! A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and the content I create. If you wanna join the ranks, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down below, join our Discord server for memes and pillar stuff, and hope to see you all next week. Thank you.